Welcome back to Views with Hughes, Agenda Free News. This is Jerome Hughes. Now, let's go ahead and get right into it. So, ladies and gentlemen, today we're diving into what could only be described as one of the most predictable disasters in entertainment history. That's right. I'm talking, of course, about the accolade under Kathleen Kennedy, the latest failed attempt by Kathleen Kennedy and her crew at Lucasfilm and Disney Star Wars to push yet another agenda-driven Star Wars project down the throats of an audience that has, well, frankly, had enough. Now, this show from its inception was a disaster waiting to happen. And now after nearly $200 million budget, countless marketing dollars and the full force of Disney behind it, we're left with the smoldering wreckage by Kathleen Kennedy of what was supposed to be the next big thing in the Star Wars universe. But instead, the act like under Kathleen Kennedy will be remembered as one of the biggest flops that Disney has ever seen. And that's really saying something right there because Disney has been having a lot of flops, okay? But let's go ahead and take a step back and talk about why this show under Kathleen Kennedy was doomed from the start. You see, Kathleen Kennedy and Leslie Hedlund, the behinds behind the ac acolyte under Kathleen Kennedy, seem to have completely forgotten or maybe never even understood what made Star Wars the cultural phenomenon that it once was. Now, let's be honest here. They've actually strayed from so far from the core values, themes and storytelling that made the original trilogy and even the prequels beloved by generations of fans. Instead, they've actually chose to focus on woke identity politics, social justice messaging and checking off every box on the woke checklist rather than delivering a story that resonates with the audience itself. And that brings us to the aftermath of the cancellation of the acolyte under Kathleen Kennedy. You see. The show under Kathleen Kennedy had barely any viewers and of those who did tune in, even fewer had anything good to say about it. Yet in typical faction, instead of acknowledging their own failures, the creators and cast members have decided to go ahead and blame the audience, okay? Or those who weren't in the audience, if you will. And we've seen this play out time and time again, have we? A show that fails not because it's poorly written or because it alienates the core fan base, but according to them, apparently it's because the audience is racist, sexist, or just too hateful to appreciate the so-called brilliance of the show. Now, this narrative is what's being pushed around and it's not just insulting but it's also downright delusional you know what take for example leslie headland's wife who wastes no time jumping on the social media to blame racism and bigotry for um the show's demise under kathleen kennedy she completely ignored the reality that the acolyte under kathleen kennedy was the least watched live action star wars project on disney plus history and that's not much right there and that's right people this show didn't just underperform it was a complete and utter failure by every measurable standard under kathleen kennedy and yet the blame is placed on the fans as if it's our fault that we didn't tune in to watch a show that was designed to lecture us rather than just entertain us and then we have also Amanda Stenberg, as y'all uh, told you all before, uh, the Leslie Headland hire, supposed to, and uh, supposed to Star Wars, a star of the acolyte under Kathleen Kennedy. Just a few days ago, she took the Instagram to address the cancellation, and instead of acknowledging that the show was poorly received because it simply wasn't good, she also played the victim card. She essentially said that she wasn't surprised that it got canceled because of all those hateful people out there. Not a word about the actual reasons, the abysmal viewership, the lack of interest from the fan base, and the complete and total rejection of this show under Kathleen Kennedy by the audience it was supposed to captivate. Uh-uh. Instead, it's all about how the world is just too hateful to appreciate the acolyte under Kathleen Kennedy. And I guarantee you all of this might have been under the idea of Kathleen Kennedy to blame the fans. But here's where it gets really interesting, people. Despite all of this, there's at least one star of the acolyte under Kathleen Kennedy who has given up hope for season two. That's right. The Kathleen Kennedy hire Manny Jacinto, who played um, whatever is the, the stranger in the show, is still clinging to the idea that the acolyte under Kathleen Kennedy could be renewed. Now, let's pause for a moment. Consider just how out of touch someone has to be to think that a second season of this train wreck under less under kathleen kennedy is even remotely possible you see the kathleen kennedy hired manny jacinto was recently at dragon con where he was asked about his future goals and dreams and what did he say you know one of his life goals is to get the act like under kathleen kennedy season two done Yes, you heard it right. After all the disastrous reviews, the horrific viewership numbers, and the overwhelming rejection by the Star Wars fan base, 
Jacinto still believes there's a future for this show under Kathleen Kennedy. Now, I've got to say, this kind of delusion is almost admirable in a way, but let's be real here. There's no way that this is happening at all. OK, and there's also the reason there's the reason there's no acolyte under Kathleen Kennedy for season two isn't because Disney didn't want to do it. But or Lucasfilm suddenly decided to listen to YouTubers and critics like us who have been calling out their nonsense for years. Uh, -uh. No reason there's no season. No, the, the reason there's no season two is simple. Nobody watched the first season. The numbers don't lie, people. The viewership data, as I showed you before, was abysmal. And the big margin, the acolyte under Kathleen Kennedy was the least watched Star Wars show that we've ever seen on Disney+. Plus. And you know what? That's exactly what happens when you prioritize a woke agenda over storytelling. And let's also talk about the whole viewership trends for a moment. You see... It would be one thing if the show started off slow and then gained momentum, much like Andor did. Now, Andor, even though it was under Kathleen, Kennedy had impressive numbers at the beginning, but as word spread and more people gave it a chance, the, its viewership grew over time. But the acolyte under Kathleen Kennedy, it did the exact opposite. See, it started off with poor viewership and then it fell off a cliff. The numbers only got worse as the season under Kathleen Kennedy progressed, and by the time it ended, almost nobody was watching. And can you really blame them? I mean, even the people who did give Acolyte under Kathleen Kennedy a chance, despite the warning signs, didn't like what they saw. You see, the show was a mess, plain and simple. And that's why it was canceled. You know, no amount of spin, no amount of blaming the fans, no amount of crying, racism or sexism is going to change that fact. You see, the audience rejected this show from Kathleen Kennedy because it wasn't good at all. And that's the end of the story. But then you also have the whole the Kathleen Kennedy hire Manny Jacinto and bless his heart is still holding out hope. Maybe he's one of the 64,000 people who signed that petition to renew the acolyte under Kathleen Kennedy, thinking that, you know, it will somehow make a difference. But let's be honest here. That's not enough to sway Disney or Lucasfilm. This show is dead and it's not coming back. And that's something that the Kathleen Kennedy hire and a few remaining fans of this show are going to have to come to terms with. Plain and simple. Now, I've also said it before and I'll say it again. This is Lucasfilm. This is Disney Star Wars and nothing should surprise us. All this under Kathleen Kennedy at this point. We've seen poor decisions by Kathleen Kennedy time and time again from people like Kathleen Kennedy. Decisions that often have more to do with identity politics and pushing an agenda than they do with the whole actual bottom line of what the fans want. So, yes, there was a part of me that wasn't entirely shocked when they greenlit the acolyte under Kathleen Kennedy in the first place. But the fact that there won't be a season two is a rare moment of sanity in an otherwise insane world. But you know what? Let's not kid ourselves here. This was a close call. I was 50 50 on whether this thing could get a season two under Kathleen Kennedy, because let's face it, we've seen Lucasfilm under the leadership of Kathleen Kennedy make some pretty boneheaded decisions in the past. But at the end of the day, the numbers don't lie. And the viewership was so abysmal that even they can't justify throwing more money down this bottomless pit under Kathleen Kennedy. Now, all the Kathleen Kennedy hires you know, some of them gave up. Um, Jacinto isn't giving up hope, though. He still wants to play Khmer and he still wants to see all the cringeworthy woke nonsense that made the, the act like under Kathleen Kennedy so unbearable for most of us come to life in the second season. Now, the shipping stuff with him and OSHA under Kathleen Kennedy, the enemies to lovers trope, the pronouns and the bios crowd, the the all oh, the flag waivers in the profiles. These are the people who love the act like under Kathleen Kennedy. But let's be clear. Those people are not Star Wars fan base. They're a loud minority and they're not the ones who have kept this franchise alive for decades. Uh-uh. The honor belongs to real Star Wars fans, the ones who love the original trilogy, who tolerated the prequels and who even, you know, embraced the first two seasons of The Mandalorian before it even started going off the rails. OK, and that's saying a lot right there. So here we are with the, the acolyte under Kathleen Kennedy in the dustbin of history where it belongs. But the Kathleen Kennedy hire, he's still out there hoping against hope that Disney will come to their senses and renew this disaster for another season. So what do you guys think? Do you think that, you know, is there any chance that 
this show could come back or is the Kathleen Kennedy hire just living in a big fantasy world? Let me know your thoughts about this in the comments below. Also, be sure to include any additional thoughts you might have this particular topic. If you enjoyed what I shared in this video, go ahead and smash the like button and share far wide across social media. And if you haven't done so already and you enjoyed all the content that I put out there, go ahead, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification. So that way you're notified of future uploads and updates. Till then, peace.